Welcome to Firebase Release Notes for July. I distilled all the updates from the past month down to six topics for today. So let's dig in right away. Our SDKs for using Firebase in your Flutter apps have always worked by wrapping the native SDKs that we already had for iOS, Android, and web through so-called federated plugins. Such a federated plugin consists of an app-facing package with a Dart code that the application calls, one platform-specific package for each platform that it supports, and an interface package that glues all of them together. In preparation for supporting developers on Windows 2, we're changing all our federated plugins to use the Pigeon Code Generator to make communication between Flutter and the host platform type safe and easier. While this should not lead to any changes in behavior, we also know that we may make some mistakes in porting the code. So if you see something that used to work and that suddenly breaks, be sure to find a bug report on the GitHub repo that I'll link below. A single Firebase or Google Cloud project can now have multiple Firestore databases. This was one of the top feature requests from our larger Firestore customers and from those of you with users around the world. The database that you already had will continue to be the default of the project, but you can now add additional databases in any of our available regions through the G Cloud CLI, giving each of them a database ID that's unique in your project. You can then access each Firestore database by specifying its database ID in the initializing call to the SDK, as we can see here. And once you have a reference to the specific database instance, the rest of the API works as it always did. Now, multi-database support is currently in preview, so some features are still in progress. For example, you won't find these additional databases in our web consoles yet. But we're working on finishing all of those features, so stay tuned for updates. Firestore now also supports point-in-time recovery to protect against accidental deletion or overwriting of data. Point-in-time recovery maintains consistent versions of your documents from past timestamps that you can recover either on a per-document basis or for the whole database. Per-document recovery works through our server-side APIs, for example, as you can see here for Java and Node.js. By specifying a timestamp, you will get the document as it existed at that time. To recover the entire database, you can export the data for a specific timestamp to a cloud storage bucket through the G Cloud CLI, as shown here. And then you can import it back into your database as you would do for any other export. Now, this release is also in preview and so new that I haven't even had the chance to check it out myself yet. So check the documentation at the link below, try it for yourself, and let me know how it works for you in the comments. A few months ago, I already told you that Firebase now supports using TOTP or time-based one-time passwords for multi-factor authentication in web apps. Well, that support is now available for iOS and Android too. So upgrade to BOMB version 32.2 of our Android SDKs or version 10.12 of our SDKs for iOS and other Apple platforms to allow your mobile users to sign in with TOTP too. And for those keeping track, this is also the first mention of Vision OS in our SDKs for Apple platforms. So don't be surprised if you see me running around with some space glasses soon. And speaking of long requested features, in version 11.10 of our admin SDK for Node.js, we added a get download URL method, similar to the one that we've always had in our client-side SDK for cloud storage. This means that you can now get a download URL for files in storage from your server-side code too, including from cloud functions without having to rely on workarounds. And finally, Firebase Test Lab now supports testing your app on the Google Pixel Fold devices that we announced at Google I.O. This is Google's first device with this form factor, so you probably want to test your app on it to ensure that it works well on foldables. You can find the devices in the Test Lab device catalog with the codename Felix. There's also a limited number of camera-enabled devices with codename Felix Camera. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel below. Now, my name is Frank, or Puff, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.